I'm the sales and marketing manager here at Elasto Proxy, and today I am joined here with my good friend and colleague, Mr. Steve Melito, who is our content writer here for Elasto Proxy. Steve, welcome to our vlog. We haven't given it a name yet, so we're going to come there. We're going to put our creative minds together, but Steve, thank you so much for joining me here today. It is my pleasure. Thanks so much, Rob. So today, today's this week's blog was uh, how to select the right anti-vibration mount. And I know Steve, you did a phenomenal job uh, uh, doing research on on this and, and writing this great blog that we have and um, to hopefully help our, our customers understand you know, the importance of vibration. Uh, and before we go into deep discussion uh, about the important stuff, I just want everyone to let everyone know that uh, you know there are three main types of product types of vibration mounts. You know, we're talking about that your your standard mounts, your bell mounts, and then obviously there's your machinery mounts um, in terms of the categories. But if we go a bit deeper now, and Steve, I would like to ask you, like, what's what's bad about vibration in general? Like, why is this a problem? This is a great question. So let me start by saying vibrations are not always bad. For example, there's a piece of the equipment called the vibratory tumbler that's used to polish parts or even stones. It's supposed to vibrate, but your machinery is not supposed to vibrate in a way that causes problems. So what are those problems to answer your question? So vibrations can make workers discomfortable or uncomfortable. Um, extreme example, but imagine being on the fourth floor of a building in an earthquake and it starts to vibrate. You're not comfortable. No. <laughs> vibrations can create structure or no noise. And in every workplace, especially in industry, there are limitations to the amount of decibels that workers can be exposed to. And you can violate standards. In the US, it's OSHA. In Canada, it's a different regulatory agency. In Europe, it's something else. But there's always standards that you have to keep in mind. There's safety issues near vibrating equipment. Literally, a screw or a bolt could come vibrating off and hit somebody. And you don't want that ever, And especially when you're probably struggling to keep people on the factory floor right now to keep things moving along. Vibrations can cause damage to equipment, to the vibrating equipment itself. They can even cause damage to your building, which is the last thing that you want. Um, there's also increased equipment maintenance costs, which you want to avoid, decreased equipment life. And vibrating equipment can also increase the amount of energy that that equipment is using. And you don't want that because nothing's getting cheaper these days. <laughs> None, none in the near future, Steve. For sure. So when we're talking vibration mounts, we're mounting onto something, and this is going into, uh, it could be an equipment, like you said, a piece of equipment, it could be going on a vehicle. So you, one of the important questions is the environment of where the vibration mounts are gonna be housed. So we have to ask, what's the environment? Why is it important to understand that? Can I just use black rubber, Rob? Oh, you can use black rubber, but what type of black rubber, Steve? <laughs> That's exactly it. And this is sort of an inside joke because this is a frequent question and all rubber is not the same. There are thousands of different types. There are classification systems. You can literally spend a lifetime learning it all, but Elastoproxy has tried to simplify this process for the engineer and the buyer. The way we do it is with an acronym called MTAP. So the M stands for media. So is your anti-vibration mount the rubber? Is it going to be exposed to fuels, chemicals, or cleaners? The T is for temperature. Is it hot? Is it cold? If it's hot, how hot does that machine get? How cold does it get? It's a big deal. Uh, the application itself is the vibration mount going to go on some heavy equipment. Is it going to go on a little piece of equipment that sits on a desktop? You're probably not going to use the same component for both. Um, and then you got P is for pressure. So you need to think about if this anti-vibration mount, say, is going to go in a pump or a metal tank, what's the maximum pressure going to be like? So again, that acronym is MTAP, M-T-A-P, and it's a shorthand way to really get you thinking about the type of rubber that you would need. 
And for everyone listening out there, what I did is I just shared the, uh, Steve wrote a great blog about uh, about uh, the MTAP, and I'm just sharing the link uh, below. So please go ahead and uh, get yourself familiar with that. Uh, we use that when we help our customers out on it every day. We try to understand the application that is being, uh, that the product's being put in, not only vibration mounts, but it could be anything that we're, we're using with uh, our customers, whether it be insulation, uh, whether it be uh, finished gaskets. Uh, so it's it's the same concept that we ask all around because we desperately need to know where this product is going. So we're making sure that we're advising you properly. So Steve, going back to anti-vibration mounts. So this is, there's, there's, there's a, a weight and a load that is sitting on top of the, the mounts. So one of the uh, concepts that you wrote about was static and dynamic load. Can you just maybe, uh, maybe demystify a bit what, what those are? Yep. I'll give a simple example that explains the difference. So imagine a 10 story building, you're up on the top floor, the elevator opens and 10 people get in and they all stand there and they're standing still waiting for the doors to close. That's a static load. The elevator starts to move, people shift on their feet. That's a dynamic load. There's a difference between those two. As an engineer, you have to be able to provide those measurements to your supplier. There's other things you have to think about as well. How big is the anti-vibration mount? The ones that are used in the railway industry are huge, and the ones that are used in a piece of desktop equipment are probably pretty small. So it's not the only thing, but that static and dynamic load are very important to be able to get out there. Awesome. Steve, thank you so much. And again, to everyone, uh, how to select the right anti-vibration mounts, a blog. And again, the link is down below. So you can take a look at uh, at uh, that link. Please uh, type that into your web browser so you can go directly to our blog. Mr. Steve Melito, thank you so much for joining me today. Rob, thanks for having me on. Looking forward to doing this again next week. Definitely. Awesome. To everyone out there, thank you so much and see you guys soon. Have a good one.